What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Activate Eight. And we got my man, starting goalkeeper at the Chicago Fire, Matt Motherfucking Lampson. What's going on, Matt? What up, Corey? Thanks for having me. <laughs> this, that's a that's sick. You got really pumped up for me, and I appreciate that. I, dude, I miss you because you're my homie, and you'll live in Columbus no more. So I'm excited to talk to you. It's been a while since I've seen seen this grill. <laughs> I know, right? And the beard still look good or what? Yeah, keep it going. You know, wear the same socks. Everything you're doing right now, just keep it going. <laughs> you're doing really That's well, exactly. man. So, quick little backstory. Matt Lampson was in uh, was in Columbus. We worked together a little bit off and on in the gym. He's a good friend. He's now with the Chicago Fire. He's on fire as their starting <laughs> goalkeeper. And he's got a really unique story. You got to go follow him at Lampstrong on Twitter. Um, obviously he's, uh, he's a professional soccer player, but what's so cool about Matt is he's a cancer survivor. He's influential to a lot of people. He's just a really good dude in general. And so if you don't know about this guy, you better go search him out. So, all right, Matt, question number one, we're going to start off with how did you fall in love with soccer, especially being American? Because obviously when we were a little bit, well, you're younger than me, but even when you're younger, it still is kind of the popular popularity was growing. So how'd you fall in love with soccer? Yeah. So, uh, so my dad had a, had a unique upbringing. He was born in Haiti, uh, and then grew up in Argentina. Um, really? so as, yeah, as you know, everybody in South America, everybody across the world loves soccer. So yeah, since he, you know, that's what he grew up doing. Um, and since he grew up doing that, uh, as, as me and my siblings were coming up, soccer was always the sport to play. Uh, I always played other sports cause I was an athletic guy, but, mm -hmm. uh, the one I really fell in love with. Um, and it's really cool to see how much it's grown now because, yeah. uh, everybody plays soccer when they're younger. Like everybody's kids play soccer at some point. So yep. hopefully it continues to grow. And, and that means, uh, more money towards the sport in the U S and more money for everybody which is always nice. That's cool. So I've seen your dad, met him a few times. I'd never guess he grew up in Haiti. I don't know why. It just seems like I was completely, I had no clue where that was coming from. That's pretty cool. I mean, he's not, he is not Haitian. I know. I know. That's why the first, the first, <laughs> the first thought was like, wait a second. He has a location. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Classic. All right. So we're going to talk about something serious now, Matt. That was serious too, but this is real serious. So obviously I mentioned that you're a cancer survivor, which is, you know, a huge part of your, your story is I want to know, and I think a lot of people can only try to think what this would feel like when you heard the words and you were, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe still in high school, they came in as a doctor and said, Matt, we believe that you have cancer. What the fuck? Like, how do you process it? What are your thoughts in... I know you, so I think I already know this answer, but like, to just take me through it because I think people, every one of us think what we would, what we would feel like, but until you actually hear those words, I don't think you can even identify, but try to, try yeah. to pick that. Dude, it was a weird story to begin with because you're exactly right. Like I was, I was about to graduate. I was like two weeks from graduating high school and I got a biopsy on the side of my neck and, uh, cause I, my blood work was all out of whack. Mm -hmm. So the, the process was in motion, um, and my parents had actually found out uh, a few days after my biopsy, but I was scheduled to go on a school visit to the school that I was going to go play soccer at, uh, Northern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. They were like, we can't, we can't take this experience from him. Like, we can't not let him live like every other kid that's going on their visit to see the college they're about to go to. So the whole time, uh, I went with my mom to the visit. And the whole time, she's not talking at all. I mean, it was really weird. And, and I remember asking her, like, what's wrong? You know? And I actually remember chilling at, get this, Outback Steakhouse. We got kookaburra wings sitting there. And I'm just chowing down. And she's just chilling there, not eating anything. I'm like, what's the problem? Why aren't you eating? And she's, she's just like, oh, I'm not hungry. Like, so she's hiding it, right? Wow. And time she knows, but she just wants me to have the experience that everybody's having. Uh, and then I come back, uh, like that Monday or Sunday or something like that. And, um, and I'm sitting on the computer and, uh, I just casually asked my dad, uh, who's a doctor. And, and I was like, Oh, whatever happened about the, those tests they were doing. Mm -hmm. And 
well, we have to talk about that. And my stomach just dropped, dude. Yeah. You knew it was serious. Yeah. I was like, uh, and I spun around in the chair and I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, Matt, like, so my doctor didn't even tell me. My dad was the one that told me. Uh, And he goes, well, the cancer. And, uh, the literally, I, I, I remember this like it was yesterday and in a heartbeat, I was just like, well, what do I have to do to beat it? That was my, that was my exact reaction. That wasn't like your fake reaction. That was you. That's not, that's not the reaction that I tell people. That's the exact reaction. Cause I remember like it was yesterday. Um, and I think that type of mindset is what helped me in the long run anyway. Um, no question. Mindset is what set the tone and I'm not into the hoodoo voodoo type stuff, but Mm -hmm. having positivity during treatment makes a huge difference. It really does. And, uh, whether it's metaphysical or not, it, it did something, man. Cause I was, uh, it, I was clear. Uh, I was clear after like, uh, after two cancer treatments out of six, I had to do six, but, um, Mm -hmm. so it was, uh, yeah, it was it was a tough it was a tough time, but at the same time, it's made me who I am today. So I'm grateful for it. Great answer, great answer. All right, so that's number three. Now is talk about the mindset. Now you're you're out of treatment, you're cancer free, and now you're like, fuck, I'm gonna focus back on soccer again, get myself back in shape. Obviously, your body was beat up. Talk about did you when you were clear to play again. Were you yeah. like a ball of fire to get back or kind of lead me through that? Dude, it, uh, honestly, probably one of the most frustrating times of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, really, it's not like they say, okay, you can go play soccer again. I was trying to do it during treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, I remember days I would get chemo and I would still go out and try and play soccer with other guys and you just can't do it. Um, yeah. One of the things that chemo drugs does is, particularly for me and my blood cancer was – it destroys your red and white blood cells. So as you know, red blood cells take oxygen to the muscles. Yep. Okay. As you eliminate red blood cells, you're not getting oxygen anywhere in your body. So yeah. trying to run for three minutes and I'm going 20 seconds and it's like I just ran a marathon. So crazy. That, after, after treatment, uh, it was a catch 22. I had, I, I needed to get back in shape to play soccer but my body physically couldn't let me do it. Yeah. So I need to run, I can't run. But you're not uh, able I, to. But Exactly. I need to lift, but I can't lift. Um, and actually, that is why I started lifting weights in particular was uh, as opposed to cardiovascular activity that your heart and lungs are so involved. Mm-hmm. Muscular activity, uh, you take one big breath and you're able to pump out uh, two and three reps and stuff like that. And, and that's what really got me going. And, um, and so that's when I really got, got into fitness. But at the same time, uh, I had, I literally had to wait for my body to rebound Mm -hmm. and my blood work to, it took, it took almost a year for my body to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. Um, then you got to get in shape after you're just normal. Exactly. And I was, I was trying to get in shape at the same time, but you're not in the shape that you want to be, uh, to play elite soccer. So, um, it was a hell of a process. And that's, that's one of the things my foundation does is we help, uh, cancer survivors, cancer patients to get back into as close as pre-cancer condition as possible. <laughs> so, uh, just cause that was a struggle I had mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that everybody's going to go and, and be a professional athlete afterward, but if they want to go and play high school basketball afterward, then yeah. we want to do it. So cool. It's real cool. Great answer, Matt. Number four, what does it feel like to walk out into the soccer field as a starter at a big game, the crowd chant your name, like what, or a big save, some type of, some type of feeling of like competition of 20,000 stand, like what, what does that feel like to you, Matt, as it's happening? Because you're, you're experiencing it right now. You know, um, you, know a lot of, you know a lot of professional athletes. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure almost all of them will tell you the exact same thing. When you're zoned, when you're out on the field, 
absolutely none of that is even coherent to you. Sure. You're so focused on the game and doing your job uh, that the fans, the the noise, uh, especially when you're playing away and you got people MFing you from the stands, mm-hmm. you, it's not it's not even worrisome to you. Um, in the games that you're really doing well, you're so in the zone that there's absolutely nothing that's gonna that's gonna waver you. And um, it's a surreal experience, especially walking out on the field, mm-hmm. uh, being one of I, I'm one of twenty something uh, starting goalkeepers in the league, which is really cool to be. Um, but it's it's humbling. It's humbling that people are there to see you. You know, yeah. uh, see you play. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you told me that story about Tiger Woods when he when you say what's going through your mind on a drive uh, with all those people lined up. Are you worried about hitting them? And he's like, "What people?" He said, "What people?" And he laughed. <laughs> so, so it's it's a very very similar situation. Sure. And uh, there's there's uh, I mean, if you talk to Boom Heron, I'm sure it's the same thing. When he gets the ball, he's he's worried about doing his job. Yeah. And you say, "What does it feel like after a big save?" Yeah. It feels. Like that's yeah. exactly what, because that's what um, you get paid to do. Exactly, exactly, and um, you celebrate it after the game. Yeah. You, you, if you go out there, you do your job, and and one of the things that I always focus on is right before a game, I'm telling myself, go out there and play the best to your ability. Okay, mm-hmm. and that's you. You can go out and do your best and you'll still be proud coming off the field. And that's all you can ask for. You can't, if you go out there and, and you're given 75% and you win the game. Yeah. You won the game, but are you happy with what you did on the field? Sure. Uh, and it goes even worse when you, when you lose the game and you get a 75% and what the hell are you doing out there? You know, if you're so, a pro athlete, you're given 75%. Something's fucked up with you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there are some of them out there and they're probably making a lot more money than I am. <laughs> So here's another one, kind of throw this will throw you a curveball. What's a perfect day look like for Matt Lampson? Huh. So just you oh. know, and it, it could be as in now, it could be after you're retired, but what what if you just get up and you could do whatever you want, golf, you could do that. What's a perfect day? Oh man. I'm big in the outdoors. Um, but honestly, a a perfect day. I'm getting up. I don't get up like you do, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, I'm getting up conservatively around 7, 7.30, mm-hmm. right? And go straight to the gym. Uh, I mean, this would probably be... After- <laughs> Fist pump. <laughs> uh, just having a good... I mean, there's nothing better than, than waking up and first thing you do is, is get your body going and working your body. Uh, and then once you're done with that, you have the whole day mm-hmm. at your fingertip. Yep. Uh, so once I'm in the gym, uh, definitely going back and having a nice, nice meal. Um, now I'm I'm a low carber, so as much as I want pizza, <laughs> it probably wouldn't. Happen. Yeah. So it's probably gonna be a burger or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and then I'm definitely going to uh, hike. I'm going to the zoo. I love aquariums. I'm in Chicago now, so I've got all that right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and just enjoying the outdoors, man. Uh, walking around, enjoying nature. Uh, we've got the lake right here, and and just enjoying the time. And then a nice leisurely uh, evening, preferably with my honey on my right arm. And exactly, exactly. But um, it's I'm a simple guy. I don't need much to make me happy. It's just uh, uh, friends, family, and food, man. Love it. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, next, what's your favorite way to train? I know this answer, but I want everybody else here. What's your favorite way to train in the off season? Um, and one thing you would say to a young athlete that you know they should be doing now? Explosive, explosive lifts. Um, Biometrics and Olympic lifts as much as as much as I can, particularly for my position. I need to be as powerful and explosive as possible. And uh, I mean, you've seen the first thing I do when I get in the gym is is power cleans, power snatch. Um, I love doing box jumps, um, agility cone drills, stuff like that. Um, 
and and squat. I mean, you you've got to keep the posterior chain locked in because um, that's that's your big movers. Your mm-hmm. your strings are are what gonna are are what makes you move. And um, particularly in the off season, <clears throat> getting that to the highest level as I could. I worked with uh, Nick Showman uh, for three, four months. He got me dialed in mm-hmm. uh, uh, for preseason. I think that's one of the reasons why I came in and won the job was I was so ready. Um, but no was, time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was all, it was all complex stuff like squat to box jumps. Um, and, and really you got to put like for young athletes, you've got to put, everything that you have into each set. So like, uh, I mean, I say the same thing on the soccer field. If you're going out and you're just doing it, that's not good enough. You've got to do it. Just like I said, to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. If if you're, if your sets are, uh, five by five at squat and you're just like, Oh, I'll just do uh, 275, five by five. And then I'll be done. Well, if that's too easy for you, then what are you getting out of it? You know? Yeah. And it, that's why it's good to have to have uh, Nick Showman this off season because uh, I mean he was crushing me. So yeah, um, I mean it, it's it's all about especially in my off season it's all about pushing myself to the max, um, and then having an incredibly good base to go into to start the season. Okay, good. Question number seven: What's your favorite part about being a pro athlete? Huh. Uh, the, the work day by far. Um, I mean, on a good day, uh, we're not here for film and we're not here for, uh, for a double session or anything like that. I'm coming in, I'm going to work at nine thirty. We don't have to get here until 10, but, uh, say I get here at 10, mm-hmm. starts at 11 and you're gone by a one, you know? So that's not bad short work day that i mean it's uh and it's really nice but at the same time a lot of people don't realize uh and this goes for every professional athlete um we don't we don't work nine and nine to five monday through friday and then get every single weekend off yeah we're not working for 10 months straight yep. straight you know yeah. and people are going out on the weekends doing whatever they want and <clears throat> you know i've got to work on saturday and sundays you know yeah. so um, it's give and take, right, Matt? Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, I mean, particularly for my vacations and stuff, I mean, I've got to, I can only do it in December, you know, but, um, that's true. It's, uh, it's it, definitely the work day. I wish I could tell you the babes. I wish I could tell you the cars, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just cash money hose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all, all, just waiting for my number. It's just incredible, dude. The list is. On, on. I, I wish I could tell you that's not how I roll. No, that's cool. All right, last one, Matt. Number eight. What do you want Matt Lampson to be known for? Cool. Oh, man. Uh, hey, so I'll tell you this. I asked Guida this, and he said a mix of Rocky Balboa. What do he say? I want to be known for a mix of Rocky Balboa and uh, Rocky Marciano. That's what he said. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that supposed to be like the same person? Uh, yeah, I think so. But maybe I he meant like Rocky the actual. Maybe he meant like the actual fighter, and then the actual uh, movie character. But I thought it was pretty cool. I was just telling you that uh, to buy you some time while you were thinking. I, I want to be known for being the first. Well, I guess I guess Lance Armstrong would be the first, but. To be someone that post cancer is known for their career, for their career, not mm-hmm. for being a cancer survivor. I got you. So it's like you know? so because you're to... so good at the sport, you're known as a soccer player. And by the way, this guy also beat cancer too. Correct. I got and, you. And Makes sense. And I mean Armstrong was cheating the whole time, but at the same time, I want to I want to be that and and. And be known for that, you know, uh, be one of the best goalkeepers in MLS. Oh, and you know what else is sweet? That type of thing, you know? Love it. 
not in like when I was I was getting games in my first few seasons in MLS, and it was like, oh, the cancer survivor goalkeeper. I don't I don't want that. You know. Yeah, the opposite um, way. Exactly. Um, and You're proving that right now, Matt. I I I would I would say it's it's getting there. It's getting there, and um, and it, it's I want to, and I'm already doing this now, but I want to be the inspiration for cancer survivors for what they can do after they're done with treatment, mm-hmm. regardless of what aspect it is in their life, what they can sure. do. And, uh, and that's, that's the biggest thing, but I think I'm, I'm slowly being that, but I just want it to be even, even on a bigger scale. Yeah. Well, dude, I got to admit, I really one. It's just great to see you, man. It's been too long. I know you, the question and the answers were phenomenal. You had no clue what they were going to be before we yeah. came on, which I thought, you know, keeps it interesting. And, uh, just super proud of you as your homeboy from the gym. And I can't wait to watch what the year continues to, to do. And you know, we're here for you if you ever need anything. Yeah, man, you're the man. Are those real degrees behind you? Or uh, they- it's Rachel's. No. It's not mine. <laughs> God, no. no. That would be a master's in education right there from Ohio State. <laughs> Oh man, it looks like you're just racking up the degrees behind you. Right oh now. yeah, degrees, couple covers, you know, no big deal. Covers. A little caricature from the fair. Oh my god, <laughs> you got masters in a twelve pack is what you have. Yeah, you know, a little little gym application, but all right, Matt. So they can see you at Lampstrong on Insta, the Instagram and, and Twitter. <laughs> Anything awesome. else? You any parting shots, Matt? No, man, just uh, check out my foundation, lamstrong.com, and and, uh, you're the man. I really appreciate it. I always love coming on your stuff, and um, hopefully get to see you soon. I should be back in early June, so uh, I'll definitely have to hit you up. I'll come up to Chicago and watch you, too. Have a great day, Matt. Thanks, brother. All right, we'll see you. Peace.